Yeah. All right. Go on. All right, so mine was chapter 15. Um, chapter 15 was about uh, Charles Martel, the hammer, and yes. then Pippin, who came after him and was one of his sons. So we're going to start a little bit before Charles Martel because we have to know the background. So, okay, it doesn't want to click, but I have a pointer, so it's okay. Um, so this was the recovery period. Um, so many of the Moravian texts from this period, which is like basically the French dynasty at this point, or the Frankish dynasty. Uh, Merovingian. Merovingian, thank you. Um, they were replaced by alternate Carolinian. Is that correct? Car Carolin Carolingian. Carolingian. These words. Anyways, the French are weird. They're Carolingian versions. Um, so what this meant was like, the Franks would write their version, and then the Carolingians would come in and be like, no, we're going to write it this way because it sounds better to us. Um, so there was like two main histories that they had, and both of them that had been done to. Um, so it was taken by the, or the one that we're talking about right now was written by the brother of Charles Martel. Um, and since it was altered so much, a lot of people like were unclear like which part of the history was really like the clear point. So they would go back to other points in history and look at it through there. So like one we'll talk about later is the Pope wrote about Pippin, and like that's where that we get the story of Pippin. Um, so many Franks were known by their Carolinian Carolingian names versus their Morovian Merovingian Merovingian, Merovingian names. Thank you. Ooh, not a V, we want the space bar. So, Charles, Charles Martel's rise. So, Charles was the illegitimate son of Pippin II. Um, he tried making, so this is like as he's a young adult, like a 20, 30 year old doing his thing. Um, he tried to make peace with the Austrasias. Um, they were just kind of pressing into Frankish land, and obviously, they're like, they weren't invading, but they were. It was like a, hey, we're just slowly going to, like, mosey on in here. Are those people from what we know, now know today is Austria? I, I would assume so. Is that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they were all Germans. So. Yeah. So um, they wanted they wanted to have war more than peace. So Charles was like, fine, let's fight. Um, and Charles went to fight the Austrasias, and Charles defeated them, and he'd have or he appointed himself king over the land that he had just won from them. Um, he ended up controlling the from the Sieve River in France to the Rhine River, which is a pretty big distance. Um, so his family, uh, Pippin died at died, and his sons tried to take over, but they were unsuccessful because they were so independent is what the book said. I didn't really understand how, like, somebody independent would, like, not be able to take over because then they don't need, like, all their, like, assistance. But I just said what the book said. Um, so the point I wanted to write was their history is very vague. So, like, he, they may not have been independent. It might have been, might have been a bad translation or something. But um, so Charles did not want to stay at the royal court very much when he was a part of it. Uh, he just had better things to do. He wanted to go bash skulls rather than sit in here about where they're going to bash skulls next. Um, so he sent his nephew, Hugh, which was his living brother. So he had two brothers that were like legitimate heirs to the throne. The older one, his, he died from battle, I think it was. And Pippin II placed the son who's died like infant next in line to take over the dynasty. So obviously that made the other two guys pretty pissed off because like you just put an infant in line over me. Um, so Charles is like, well, my nephew can do this for me. So he sent Hugh, um, but there was never any indication that Hugh actually liked Martel, especially because like, if you look at it, Hugh's grandmother was the queen and Charles had no legitimate relationship with them or with her. So it's like, well, why would I want, like, basically it's like that weird uncle you have that's not really a part of your family, but like you like him anyways. So it's like, 
oh, well, I guess we have to like him. Um, so Charles and his living brother were working on controlling the area because of um, putting the infant in charge. So the two brothers were just basically doing their thing and like, who's gonna stop them, the infant? Um, so yeah. Uh, so more expedition and fighting. Obviously this is a fake picture, but there's not many pictures of Charles Mar Martel and this one looked kind of cool, so I chose it. Um, so he went west of the Rhine to find Saxons who were once under control of the Franks and then like they got their freedom and Martel basically was like, listen, there's a reason that you were under control of us and he punishes them and makes them like come back under Frankish control. Um, right after this time, uh, a lot of, there was a group of Spaniards in Spain obviously that revolted from the Arab rule um, but they were put down just because they were not weak enough. So the leader of this group, um, they appealed to what? You said they were put down because they were not weak enough. Oh, strong enough. Sorry. Um, they, appeal, they appealed to Martel, who met them at Tours because the Arabs were pushing up. And Charles Martel basically like just destroyed the Arab force. Um, so, yeah. So this was the point that um, a lot of people say like saved Christianity from like being taken over by Islam because Islam was just pushing and pushing. And this was like the first like fight from anybody that wasn't like, or that was Christian that actually did something. So uh, Martel's, Martel won the battle and once he won, he put all of his own people in the government of the Spanish area. Um, and then he bent, essentially went on a crusade through like the Arab controlled nations in Southern France and just was like taking back over Frankish land. And yeah, he was balling. Uh, so the last of his fighting, Charles um, couldn't defeat the strongest fort that the Arabs had that was in Southwest Spain. Um, it was just too strong. But on his way back home, he basically burned and sacked every village he went to. So it was like, well, fine, we don't want to, like, we can't beat your strongest fort, but we'll make it, like, we'll make all your other places just piles of ash. So have fun with that. Um, and then he made himself king of the whole Frankish area after that. So he kind of, like, overstepped his brother and was like, hey, I am now the king. And then this is a map of his kingdom so i believe this is the siev river is that right i think so yes. all right and then the rhine is way out here so like at one point he's fighting way out here against like ostrogoths saxons bavarians um and then he meets at tours right here and he comes down into fighting the arabs in spain and he pushes them back down to this beautiful line and I'm going to assume this section was probably turned green at some point, but I can't prove that. Um, so that was the end of Charles Martel. Um, he was great for the Franks. But next came his son, Pippin the Short. Um, so Charles Martel, when he died, he put he had three sons. He had two legitimate sons, which was Pippin the Short and then Carlman. Um, and then they had another one who really wasn't even that important, so I didn't write him in. Um, so the two sons, Carlman and Pippin, were both put in charge of the kingdom. And as soon as they were, a lot of land was just taken back over by um, the people who had it. So over here is where a lot of it got taken back. Um, the Saxons took a little bit up here. The Bavarians took right here, and then the Ostrogoths basically pushed to the river that's right here. So just taking back land that was once theirs, essentially. Um, so that was that was kind of expected. Like their sons really hadn't done much, or his sons haven't hadn't really done much. So it was like, oh well, it's not Charles Martel, so we're just gonna take back our stuff. Um, just lack of fear of like fear of a person versus fear of a nation. Um, so the brothers together like fought and after eight years of fighting they got their land back um pippin's brother uh came to oppose him over the way he was running the kingdom this was the third brother um but he was actually battling 
like when he opposed, like basically they went right into a war as he started the opposition and he died in battle. So he was like, well, you're dead. You were the only person opposing me. So I'm going to become king and name myself king. So that's what he did. Kind of, kind of the greatest story of like, I do what I want. Um, so during his reign, um, there were low levels of minorities in his kingdom. It was basically all Frankish people with a little bit of Ostrogoths and um, I forget the other group, so I'm going to go back. Uh, Saxons. So uh, the Pope came to Francia to ask for help from Pippin. Um, there was a group, the Ostrogoths were pushing more and more into Rome, and that was freaking out the Pope. So he asked Pippin to go and fight the Ostrogoths. Um, but Pippin was defeated by the Ostrogoths. Um, and when he was defeated, he was killed. So that was like basically the end of the chapter. And then it went on about like what the Pope wrote about him. So the Pope's record um, of Pippin was really flawed compared to what the book said about him at the end. So the Pope in his recording said that Pippin like at one point like kissed the like cloak outfit of the Pope and like um, basically swore his allegiance to the Pope where like in the Frankish text there was never anything like this which was like a huge thing because like then like you're fighting for God versus like fighting for just the guy that's paying you enough Um, uh, the way I saw it was probably both were filled with some white lies like he probably didn't kiss his cloak but like he may have like done the godfather thing and like kissed his hand or something um yeah i mean i can i could pull some up but that's the end of my presentation so yeah thunderous i almost put a picture of my scene in brand too but i didn't think that was going to be here you almost did what? I almost put a picture of MC Hammer instead of 